All right, so let's talk about some basic networking techniques. I'll start with Nmap and Wireshark and then come back for these others in the next video. So Nmap is, of course, the first thing you usually do when you find a server or even a networking machine you want to know something about. Um, you run it from any, uh, any operating system you like. And uh, so here you turn off the Windows firewall and start Windows uh, turning on remote desktops. You've got a known service running on Windows and then scan it from Linux. And you'll find uh, a flag here, but you do have to scan from Linux. So students have found if you scan from some other operating system, you sometimes don't find the suspected flag. And then you can learn some more in-map options. I started doing hack the box, although I didn't get very far before I got distracted and did other things. But one thing I learned from hack the box that really made me happy was this, how to make Nmap really fast. Because scanning every port, they always tell you, don't be an idiot, always scan every port on every target. And yet scanning every port took like 10 or 15 minutes. It was really a drag. This gets it down to like two minutes. I think it's mostly the minimum rate doing it. But anyway, that's pretty awesome. So you can really scan all 65,000 ports in like two minutes, which is much less painful. And then you should make a habit of just always scanning every port on every box in a CTF or things like that. And so you'll get a report listing all these various services and what versions they have. And so I have some challenges here where you can scan some ports on my server and find some, uh, some flags just to show that you know the basics of how to use Nmap. And another tool to get really good at is Wireshark. Wireshark lets you analyze live network traffic, although that is not a good idea because Wireshark is a framework like Firefox where you can write extensions and people keep writing protocol handlers and adding them to Wireshark and they're not very well audited so they often have vulnerabilities in them. So if you have Wireshark connected to a real network interface and you're listening on live traffic, you're taking a risk of being exploited. Also, Wireshark typically just um, uses up RAM until it crashes. So you're not really supposed to turn Wireshark on and use it to monitor your network for security purposes and leave it going forever. What you're supposed to do is use TCP dump for that and then save a file and then use Wireshark to analyze that file later. That's what it's for. So anyway, um, I have some files. There's an FTP login you can load. And if you load an FTP login, you can learn exactly what's happening in Wireshark. Wireshark is extremely useful if you want to get your Network Plus certification and when you're learning Cisco networking. If you want to know how networks work, looking at every packet one by one is really important here. For example, here is opening an HTTPS connection. My computer sends a SYN up to port 443 and then the server sends a SYN ACK back and then I send an ACK. That's the TCP handshake. There are a bunch of packets that go after that to complete exchanging the cryptographic information for HTTPS and so on. Anyway, FTP is a famously unsafe protocol because it doesn't encrypt anything. So you can just look at FTP. You can filter for FTP traffic only here in the filter bar. And then you can just read FTP traffic right here. And you can see the usernames and passwords and the names of files as they go by. You same thing's true of HTTP. You can steal, uh, Logins that are transmitted unencrypted over HTTP, which is less common than it used to be, although there are still plenty of websites and Android apps especially that still do that, and even iPhone apps. I was surprised when I started auditing a lot of iPhone apps because um, Apple announced about two years ago with great fanfare that you could no longer have any apps that sent unencrypted data, and that is not true. I don't know what they're talking about. I found plenty of apps that sent unencrypted passwords, even on modern iPhones. So anyway, um, one real useful feature in Wireshark, when I began using Wireshark, I just used this part of it and looked at the packets one by one. And that is for amateurs. What's a lot better is to just find the stream that contains data that's interesting and then right click, follow TCP stream. This is a really useful thing to do because now you get this view, which strips away all the addresses and combines all the data from packets. So you see what I sent to the server in red and then what the server sent back in blue. It's very nice if you want to get, you can just see the command line commands. The only problem is that you have content encoding. Uh, most requests allow the server to reply with zipped content encoding. That was up here someplace. Um, 
you accept encoding gzip. That told the server that if you want to, you can conserve bandwidth by zipping the data before sending it to me, which is fine for your browser, but it's annoying if you're in Wireshark or in Python or something trying to look at raw traffic because it zipped. Anyway, um, so you can uh, examine this stuff and find some, uh, some passwords and other things in the capture files that I put up. And a few weeks ago, I did a CTF and they had this thing called APT capture, which is great. And I added a whole bunch of here, like I learned that CTF, red team CTF. You guys, I get it. Some might be the same people. Anyway, so, some red team, some CTF I did online in, in May, and they had a whole series of challenges. So I put them here. This is APT traffic here with quite a few interesting things in it. So you find the only protocol used for encrypted communication. And I've added some hints here. There is a tool being used to make that communication. And you can find the command line that was used to launch it. And then you can find the actual download of that tool. You can get the tool out of uh, Wireshark and get its hash. You can then find the private key and decrypt the communication. And then you can find port knocking, which is a very old trick to make a secret doorway into a server where you listen and there's a certain port number like 1000. And if it appears to be closed, but if you send a TCP SYN to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, then it will open port 22 for like one, two seconds. So the point of this is if you run something like an Nmap scan, all the ports will appear to be closed. But if you send the secret knock, one port will open just long enough for you to get in. And this was used by malware and for root kits and by some legitimate administrators to make a secret door into your network that is very hard for anyone else to find. There's a newer technique called uh, single packet authentication, single packet authorization. It sends in a cryptographic key, but this is an old technique and it was used in this case. Anyway, um, so you can find the shell session and you can find the commands they executed. So there's a few fun things to do and you can practice using Wireshark, which is a very useful tool. Wireshark and Nmap are fundamental tools. You should be good at using both of them. All right, stop this one.